What's up guys, hope you guys are doing awesome. So today we're going to go over a play we just did, which was a 800% Fina swing. So before we get into it, just know that this is all speculation. Don't invest more than what you can lose. Assume that you will lose everything and you won't get rich quick. Crypto is super risky, especially for low cap coins like the Fina. And there's a high chance I have no idea what I'm talking about, okay? I'm just a random guy on the, on the internet and I just got lucky, okay? So there's a very high chance that happened. So with all that being said, let's get into it. So what happened, okay? So I researched and found out about the game, which I'll tell you guys how I researched and found it in a bit. Secondly, I got into the Genesis NFT airdrop, which gives you 500 Fina coins. So 50% right when the token generation happened, which was around October 12th, and then one month later you'll get you'll get another 250, and that's around November 12th. And the total cost was around 200 BUSD. And also another benefit was being able to mint more mystery boxes later, which made even more money. However, let's just exclude that out of the equation and focus on the Fina coin swing. Thirdly, I also accumulated on dips with the major support around 1.6. So that was like a five or six time tested support within 10 days. So also accumulated a lot around then. Then I waited for bullish news to happen. So it was stagnating around 1.6, right? Then it was hovering to around two. So it was going 1.6 to two for a while. So after the bullish news of the FINA entering the Binance Smart Chain Most Valuable Builder number 3, it flipped all the way to 3.2, which I sold a moderate amount from 0.40, and the coin's around 3.6 right now, so if you held, you could probably sell it for a lot more now. So 0.4 to 3.2, that's an 800% flip. So that was a solid play. However, let's get into how we can find the next play okay all right so to find the next play to find the next moon gem okay moon schmood let's get into it so what i like to do is i like to follow other people who are big investors like investment firms prop firms super big private whales etc on twitter so there's a bunch you can find on there feel free to check out my twitter to see who i'm following too and you get to see what they're in getting into even before they get on YouTube. So this is super important. By the time they create a YouTube video, that probably means that it's too late. They just already bought their bag like probably a few weeks ago and then now they're shilling it on YouTube, okay? So that's why it's it's important to do your own research as you're able to find these gems early before these YouTubers shill them and pump them and it's too late for you to accumulate them, okay? Secondly, after you find any games that seem interesting, it may be good to deeply research the game and find key criteria for you to invest in a game that makes sense for you. So here are some of my favorites I personally use. So for example, they have to have like a minimum game demo or better footage. So at least just some kind of fun gameplay with like a positive, addictive dopamine loop where you just get addictive and play it. You know, think of games like Valorant where you kill someone, you want to keep killing someone, you die, you want to get back at them or something, or you play team death matches, you play other games like that where it's just like a fun, simple loop where you can do over and over again. Secondly, having big investors and partnerships are a must as they not only give you capital, but they help lead the team towards very tying, trying times, right? For example, if there's a hack or if there's like a manipulation by a whale or something by another party, they can jump in and help save the day or they can give advice on anything else like marketing and giving free advertisement, etc. along with having loyal fan bases. Thirdly, having a transparent team that showed their info publicly and having past game experience is a must for me too as they're able to work around it. They're not really guessing much because they've experienced the hardships before, so they know how to deal with them. 
Fourthly, responsive mods and having positive community members. So this requires you to get in those discords, telegrams, and to chat with the team, chat with the community, see if you vibe with them. So if you don't vibe with them, the mods are attacking you, the community members are kind of toxic, or they're just not even responsive, that's probably a bad sign that the game's going to go downhill, and it may be like a... Even if the game looks good, even if the website looks super aesthetic and everything, that probably means that long term they're kind of screwed. Okay. Fifth one, if there's a community focused token distribution that's very balanced, so at least 40 to 50 percent going towards rewards and earnings for the community, and then there's not much tokens in one holder, so maybe. 10 to 20% divided among the team, 10 to 20% among the investors, 5% marketing, and etc. So having a balance token distribution helps a lot, which you can usually find in the white paper documents. The sixth one would be great social media engagement and growth. So if you find a game that you like, check their Twitter maybe every few days or a week or so see how that's growing if they're stagnating or even losing followers you check their posts there's no one replying that's kind of bad sign see if discord too if there's like crickets in there then that's probably a bad sign that it'll be not a good game to invest in third would be to get into early cheap genesis nft drops so the good thing about this is that it allows us citizens to participate so ideally you could get into those ideos the coins those private investments however getting into these early genesis nft drops they usually give you a really rare nft or they also airdrop you the token itself so this is a way to bypass that so get into these nft drops after researching after getting to know the community right so there's gonna be a bunch of these genesis nft drops don't feel the need to fomo in just take your time, research them. If you miss them, there'll probably be another one. So just take your time and you'll be good. The fourth one would be to, after getting these Genesis NFT drops, to actually utilize them, right? So you could either do the flipping approach where you just wait to, there's a euphoric gap up. So maybe there's a bullish catalyst, just like the Binance Smart Chain most valuable builder one or the overall crypto market heats up, then you just sell it after the token pumps a lot. For example, if it's a breeding game, like a peg C or Cyball coming up, you can find the highest quality NFTs because the breeding fees are usually the same for even if it's the cheapest quality NFT or even if it's the most expensive, highest quality NFT, the breeding fees are usually the same. So it makes more sense to accumulate the highest quality NFTs so that you can have the cheapest breeding fees and you can flip them for the most. Thirdly, you can utilize these Genesis NFTs as they are usually more rare, more powerful. You can play the game and dominate to be in the top 1% as there's usually like PVP tournaments and rewards and titles and exclusive benefits given to the top 1% of people who compete in these games. So if you really love the game, you really love the gameplay, you could compete and hold these really rare NFTs so that you can be in the top to reap the rewards, right? And you can utilize them for anything else that pertains to your game. So pertaining to point C, playing the game, the reason why we want to do that is that rewards are maximized when you are either in the top 1%, so you're doing giving a lot of time into it, or when you do the bare minimum of the fundamentals, right? You can do the opposite approach where you learn about another game and then you learn the basics of how it works, just enough to get by. Then maybe you do a scholarship or you flip the NFTs. That way you can maximize your time into the games that you really do love playing. And then for the games that can give you a lot of profit, but you don't really like it, you can have other people play for you, then you can make returns on farming, or you could just flip it whenever there's a euphoric gap up, okay? So anything between is, in terms of return, a more waste of time as you aren't really maximizing your time and energy. So 
Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to leave a like, comment what you think of Defina. It's currently my favorite NFT game. I highly recommend you guys check it out. Super fun game, and I can't wait for it to release in early or mid November. And let me know what other videos you guys want to see. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And here are other ways you can check out in the document, which I'll post in the caption to support the channel with any other referral links and things like that. So most importantly, these videos are for entertainment purposes and they're not, they are not recommendations as I'm not a licensed professional. The best investments are the ones where you have the greatest conviction in by doing your own research. So the name of the game in crypto is to survive as long as possible. This means limiting excessive leverages, not getting liquidated, and just getting into great fundamental projects that could be the future blue chips of the future. So if you get into those, you hold them for as long as possible, you get to really reap the benefits long term. Okay, so hope you guys enjoyed the video and talk to you all next time.